Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Happiness Retreat. I am your host, Kimberly Trevs, and today we have the good fortune to be in conversation with my dear friend and colleague, the fabulous and stellarly multi-talented Francis Dunnery. I am? Is I am? Is that how it is? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, there's more. Is that my new title? <laughs> I'll take that. I'll, it, it's better than it's better than fat multimedia psychopath. <laughs> no, I was going to say. <laughs> Are you all right? All right. Francis is a rock star, talented musician known internationally for decades. A multimedia artist and an astrologist extraordinaire. So, Francis, thank you so much for taking your time. My to share pleasure, with us Kimberly. Today. My pleasure. It's good to do it with you. This is going to be a good one, guys. <laughs> Hold on to your seats. <laughs> so, Francis, we're here to talk today about any topic you wish around spirituality and the soul and mastering your own energy. And I know that I can just say, take it away. So, um, Francis, can you start by telling us a little bit about your background? Well, my background, I'm just, you know, I'm interested in a lot of things. I'm an avid study of philosophy and psychology and, you know, anything that I can, uh, anything mind expanding. I mean, I'm a, I don't do drugs or I don't drink or I don't do anything like that, but all the other like, you know, stuff, about, you know, I like, I like to get into that. I like expansion. That's what I like. I like forward motion, forward progress. And so, you know, growing up in the working class background that I did in England, it's a bit like uh, North Korea, you know, where they tell you, you know, you're a piece of garbage. <laughs> um, you know, all the, they really do. Like, like it's a, I, mean, I didn't really realize that because you look at like North Korea and you see, and you think like, what are they doing? Those lunatics, you know, it was done to everybody in the UK. Wow. We were brought up to believe that we weren't as cool as, um, and valid as these other people, these queens and princes. And, and, we, and you really, it gets under your skin and you're like, dude, you know? <laughs> and so I, I was brought up in that whole thing, you know, and, it wasn't my fault or anything. I was just born into that life and it wasn't the queen's fault. She was just born into that life too. She was just born into this societal thing that, that we do, you know, we do this society thing and we add, we, you know, we have these ranks and files of, you know, the ego does it, it you know, it makes up all these different structures about who we should be and who we are. And well, he's, he's a dentist. So he's above the carpenter and he's, she's a nun. So she should be, you know, like all these different identities that we have. And working class was one of them. And so when you do working class, then you're beneath people and, and, you, and you do it. But when I got to a certain age, I realized that, you know, you know, I wrote a song about it actually on my new album. It's called, I thought I was nothing, but I'm everything. You know what I mean? You create your own reality in the world. And so I realized that I wasn't a piece of shit like that, you know, and, it, and it's like, oh, wow. So I'm actually... I'm actually, that was just a, that's just like, it's like, you know, when somebody says to the, um, um, you see all those like um, African military guys with like rows and rows and rows of these like military things, you know, and it's all just made up. Yeah. They're just doing it to like look good or the, or the, the North Koreans where they have these thousands like medals all over their hats and like, oh, and it's just like a load of garbage and you attach importance to it. You think like, oh, well, I've got medals and a, as if that is something to have. This is how it is in the working class England. So you're brought up in that feeling tone of you're less than. And so that's been the story of my life, really. You know, when you say, like, who are you? You know, I think whatever it is I'm doing, I'm always coming to some conclusion of like, oh, I'm not like, I'm not that. You know, I'm not like a piece of garbage. I'm, I'm actually all right. Well, you know, how, how cool is that? I'm 57 now. I think I was about 56 when I went, I'm actually all right. It's all right. <laughs> you know? There's hope. Yeah. There's hope for all of us. I mean, it's a good question. Who are you? Yeah. That's a really great question, you know, because like you, you know, you think, you wonder how you are, say, Kimberly. When you say Kimberly, who is that? You say it for like, you know, for other people, I'm Kimberly. And then you have your role you play. But who are you for yourself? That's a deep thing. Like when, who am I? Who am I? Like, you know, because you're not, you know, you're, we're not our bodies. Like you could chop your hands off and you're still there. Hmm. So you can't really say we're bodies. 
you know, because if you chop my hand off, right? So let's say, for instance, what you can see on the camera is it's chopped off. So I, you know, my ass is gone, every, my legs are gone, my feet, my hands, like it's all good. You chop my ears off, took my eyes. I'm still here. Yeah. And I'm not any, so because what, as, as what we are, or what we are, we're not things. Like my hand is a thing. Mm. Like humans, we're not things. We're nothing. We're no thing. We're just a space of nothing filled full of identity. All these things, you're working class, you're American, you're Jewish, you're Catholic, you're Muslim. Like, oh, they stuff these things in you when you're born into the space because that's all you are, some space. Because you're not a thing. You're, like, you're not your hands or anything. So you're just this space and they fill you full of these, like hoarders, you know, in the hoarders thing when you're just so full of shit. <laughs> There's no space to put anything new in there. So... When you empty it all out and burn it on the, on the front yard, you're left with that space again. And then you can choose what you put back in the space. But don't you think that, that these things were put in play? Even, you know, if you go back to the queen and, and the not royalty, wasn't it just to put some kind of structure? Don't people like structure? Don't they accept... The well, it's a bit like the Matrix. The they don't know. They don't know any different. They're just like the Matrix. Like when you know, when you break free of it. When you know, when when I broke free of the Matrix in 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 those terms. You know, when I st when I went like, oh wow, so I'm not a Catholic, because it, I, you know, you were defined. Right. You didn't choose that girl Kimberly. Or you didn't choose that. You were defined. That defined you. They said you're this and you're that and you're this. So there's your nature. Who you are is your nature, and then there's this character called Kimberly. And the two are not the same. And one is actually damaging to the other. It's like a, a spider, when it comes out of its uh, egg, not, nobody teaches it how to make a web. Right. Because its nature is it makes a web. It, it already knows how to do it. That's, that's what it is. Like, that's its true. Now, imagine if I called it Bill and said it was a North Vietnamese working class peasant. <laughs> and he understood that. <laughs> It's, but it's like, it's ridiculous because the spider is the spider is its nature. Yeah. And so these characters, this Kimberly character, this structure that you talk about, or this, um, what can I say? This identity, it's an identity. That's all it is. It's like a, it's like a character you play in a film. Francis Donnery, the rock star guy, the astrology guy. The, the, and then I have to go and do that. <laughs> yeah, but you do it so well. Yeah, but I don't want to do it. But you have to do it because do you're things. sharing your talents. I only it's want to do the amazing. things. I mean, I, I, I do music. I have that in me. And I do. I love to do astrology. I love to go to school. I love to. I'm an absolutely active father. I love my father, my father thing. So that's a role. Father's a role. So I do father. Right. Like you can't not do them. Otherwise, you'll just be like an amoeba, like wandering around lost in, the, you know, in amongst the ether. But the truth is, is you've got to be very careful because the identities that you pick, they're like little jail cells. They're prisons. Yeah. You know, and then you get into, um, you know, you, you know that, that, that are, it's just a prison. Like you put yourself in a prison and then your life becomes that. You know, where, where does the, the spider web part of you, you sacrifice it to be this, identity and yeah. that's where the damage gets done yeah you sacrifice who you are you know i talk to people all the time and i've you know some people wake up in a bank at 59 years old and go what have i done yeah this Where's is what my, my mother wanted me to do yeah i didn't want to do this i wanted to i wanted to study mammals in florida are you telling my story <laughs> probably you are Oh, you're a Pisces, so you—I you, mean, yeah. you have certain aspects of you that's connected to you. You'll want that connection. You'll still crave yeah, it. I crave it, yeah. You know, but your identity might—you know, like what do you do for a living? What is it? Are you a banker or something? I thought you do the bank and all that. I'm an engineer. Thank you very much. I'm an a engineer. banker. <laughs> oh, so you're an, I didn't know you're an engineer. I didn't know that, Kimberly. You didn't tell me that. What? I yes. thought somebody told me that you were a banker. Oh no, they know what you know what they said. They said she's got loads of cash. Oh, well. That's what it is. So you're an engineer with loads of cash, right? So that's good. But the, but the reality... The money is, Pisces. Not the, the money not Pisces. The, yes, right. the money Pisces. Right? <laughs> yeah. So that, that role, that the Pisces will still need to come out and you'll still need to have these conversations because that's your spider web. Right. Do you understand? Yes. 
I don't Can know. We about talk about... no, usually, usually the role we play the, it usually comes from a traumatic event that happened between the ages of three and six. So something will happen to you between the ages of three and six. And you can usually tell what the traumatic event is because if you look where you're effective in life, that's where your traumatic event will be. So for instance, I'll give you an idea. So I, there was two girls when I was a kid, I was four years old and I live about a mile from the beach and two girls, um, they both had six month old babies. One of them lived next door and her friend lived a little, a little while away. And my mother made them take me to the beach one day. They just, they used to go to the beach every day with their kids to do that, like where, you know, we're 18 year olds with our six month old babies thing. I get it. I get all that. But my mother made them take me with them and they didn't want to take me with them. They, and, you know, and like they really didn't want to take me with them. Right. And so they were furious and they made me like walk behind them. So I'm four years old and I'm like walking behind these two girls who hate me and they're saying to each other, I can't believe that. And I can, I'm just, and I'm mortified because I can't go anywhere. And when I got to the beach, I couldn't eat my sandwiches with them. I couldn't play with it. Like it was just, it was just horrendous, dude. And I would do things like I would, I would say, do the babies want a towel? I was, I was trying to do anything I could to get them to like me. And they just, it was just, and, but I made a decision about myself on that beach was, that first of all, I'm not likable. And second of all, which is more importantly, I have to do something in order for you to like me. And so I became an entertainer. And that's what I'm good at. Because I, I, I'm on that beach every single, I'm on that beach right now. Actually, I'm not, I'm not on the beach, but I got off the beach at like 45. I was on that beach all my life, mm -hmm. trying to get people to like me. Do you like me? Do I, can I, uh, and that's, and I'm really good at it. I can have an audience eating out of my hands in two seconds because I learned that on that beach. I got, I learned how to get people to like me. And that is, um, that's how identity has been started. Wow. And so your engineering perhaps will go back. It might be to impress daddy or it could be, you know, there'll be some traumatic event back there where Absolutely. you'll want to, you know what I mean? You'll be wanting like, let me please daddy. So I'll just be an engineer. Right. And the reason why I'm not in front of the limelight like you were on stage traveling the world is because children are to be seen and not heard. Right. So all that. That's, that's your so idea. I'm behind my little yes. computer just doing my thing. <laughs> yes. So that's so. And so you create your identity, yet your Piscean, your, your spider web is leaking out of you anyway. You have to, because yeah. we, we have to do it. And this is the sad thing is that, you know, some people, when I talk to people on their deathbeds, literally, they never regret what they did. They always regret what they didn't do. Mm. They all, they, you know, there's things that they didn't do that they sold out their nature, their spider web, to do this societal image thing. Yeah. And I got to tell you, man, I've had, I've had BMWs and Mercedes. I've, I've flown around in the Warner's private jet for years. I've had mansions. I've, you know, you name it. I swear to God, I'm not just saying this to be like a, a, a dick. It just <laughs> doesn't make you happy. No. It's just more shit to take care of. Wow. It's like, you know, like the Taoists say the best thing, easy is right. Mm. Easy is right. That's the way to go. Imagine if you got a boat, like I have my boat. So you're, I'm 45 grand into a boat, 65 grand into a boat. Now I've got to pay for a marina to put it there. So the marina has cost me like a grand a month. I could put the money, and I've got to get some guy to drop it in there. I've got to pay that guy. I've got to get an engineer to fix the mechanic. I've got to get a cleaner to clean the board. I've got to take it out of the... The, the marina in the winter time, otherwise it'll freeze and I've got to pay somebody to do it and I've got to wrap it in plastic and I've got to pay somebody to do that and I've got to blow. Why don't I just rent a freaking board? On no, because see, I'm a Pisces. You lost me. You lost me at that. <laughs> I want that boat. <laughs> Why don't I just rent a boat for four days on the times that I go sailing? Because the rest of the time, it's just something, it's just like a, it's just like, it's what to say, because it's just to say you've got a boat. No, to use it every day because you're a Pisces. <laughs> well, you wouldn't use it every day because you'd be at work. And so, so that's what I'm saying. It's That's like, true. You're right. You're right. Pisces is right. I mean, you, yeah. you know, I'm going to buy a house in Spain. Yeah, it sounds great, especially to Americans. Until they realize that Spain for English is like New Jersey. And it's like, you know what I mean? And it's like, I'm going to buy a house in Spain. And you get the house and it's $475,000. Yes, I have a house in Spain. And I've got to get a gardener. And I'm only there two weeks to the year. Mm -hmm. I've got to get a garden. I've got to get somebody to look after it. I've got to pay the, 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 the international tax and I've got to 
pay the duty on it and the blood of that and all this stuff. And I go there for two weeks a year, but I've got a house in Spain. Why don't you just rent the heaviest hotel you can find for two weeks, 10 grand a night, yeah. and you'll still save yourself 500 grand. <laughs> it's Very ridiculous. True. And so the Taoist said it was all Chang Su. He said, easy is right. Okay, so let me ask you this. You know, you've had, it's easy for you to say, I've been flown around and I've had mansions and I had this and it didn't make me happy. And anybody who hasn't had all of that, it's kind of hard to, to think that stuff doesn't make you happy. So where did we learn that that stuff makes us happy? Well, it's the ego. They tell you that every day. This is what they're doing with every, all, the, all the social structures. Like, well, if you have a this and you have a that, and you, you know, as, if, as if a boat, a house in Spain, three BMWs and a beach house is something, who wants to look after that? Hmm. I don't want to look after that. It's like your entire life becomes looking after that shit. Yeah. I want to be free. I want to be, you know, I'll just go to your house if you want to do it. Or I'll rent a house for two weeks. I don't want to go look after it all. Your life becomes this jail cell of looking after that shit that they tell you you've got to have to be happy. And it doesn't make you happy anyway. All right. So it how really do we get out from under it? How do it we get really out from under it? It really doesn't. Because you've got the, it's a, it's a, <clears throat> you know, you come to that realization, you know, it's like everybody thinks they're going to be happy. Because they got cash. It's like, it doesn't make you happy, dude. Hmm. Especially if you're buying a load of shit. I mean, right now, I live in, this house I'm in right now, as we speak, cost me 90 grand. It was 169 on the market, and I offered them 90 cash. And they took it. Wow. Right? They, I, I couldn't believe it. They took it, right? But it's a shit in, in, because the house I was in before then was a, was a fortune, cost a fortune. And um, so this is a shit all in comparison but it isn't really. It's amazing in here. Well, you come visit. It's absolutely amazing. We call it the Big Purple Castle. It's an amazing place. The vibe in here is genius. It's absolutely way better than the other house. But the other house on paper looks like, oh, well, it's got this and it's that. It's massive and you've got this and the blah. And it's on the housing estate and the blah, blah, blah. I don't want to do that. Mm. It's like the people who live in the main line down in Philadelphia. You know, I hang out with them. They're nice people and all that. But they're like prison cells. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, I live in a $4 million house. It's like, well, whoop de doo who cares? No, I, I don't care. What do you think of trying to impress me with that? I don't care. You got to pay for it and look after it. You know, it's like, it's like, so these fundamental approaches to life, this is what, you know, this is where, and, and in fact, you can't even be happy because happy doesn't mean anything. You know, like you can be satisfied, Mm. But you can't be happy because the, the way that humans are, we project meaning onto things. Like this interview is just an interview. That's a fact. But the type of the color of the interview is up to you. Oh, it's a good interview. I said, you said, no, it isn't. It's a crap interview. But it's the same interview, but what you project onto it. So happy is like that. Oh, it's, I'm really happy. Well, you, know, you can have the experience of satisfaction. You can be satisfied in life. But happy doesn't mean anything in of itself and so to be satisfied you have to address your nature that's where satisfaction comes from the ego or the identity will take you out to the other end four bmws he's achieved the top of the range and it's like it doesn't mean anything you know like when i pick my kids up and then my kids come down here and they're running around the big purple castle and we go and put halloween stuff on and we're just you know we're going to do all that that's that's that i'm satisfied yeah I'm satisfied in life. Yeah. I don't want, I don't, I actually don't want loads of money because I have to look after it. You know, I just, I just don't, I'm, I'm not that type of guy. I've had like, I've had tons of cash in my time and you just have to look after it. I just want, you know, I like the way I'm living right now is like, I feel great. I can do everything I want to do. I'm not like skint or anything like that, but I'm, you know, I don't have anywhere near the money I've had through my life, mm -hmm. but I'm way more satisfied now than I've ever been. Nice. There's nothing to do with the cash, you know. Nice. And after you, after you've, you, you know, you lost your third house, you know, it's like you got started. You know? <laughs> the fundamental problem about being a musician is you lose houses. <laughs> I remember Robert Plant said the best thing to me. Robert Plant, we were in Switzerland, and um, there was this beautiful girl walked in the cafe, and Robert has been through the same thing as as I've been through, and he just nudged me and he went. I can feel another house coming on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh my so God. it is. I'm three houses down. It's a beautiful farm in Vermont. A stunning apartment in Kensington in London. And that house have just gone in Stroudsburg out here, which was a really nice house that we built actually. Mm -hmm. And then um, 10 years ago. And, uh, and here I am in the big purple castle. I was happy as Larry. That's amazing. All right. So you have figured some stuff out and you have some totally fundamental yet unknown to some people concepts and you give them and share them on so many different platforms. So can we first start with your music because you came to my home and you gave a concert. Right. And during that concert, you sang your, and you alluded to, you write songs, which are, I want to say heart opening and mind opening for people to hear. And it, it's your delivery. You deliver it with love and with uh, humor. So can you give us a little taste of your house concert uh, offering? What do you mean a little taste of it? I don't understand what you well, mean. Well, explain why it's so different. Because, because my nature, right, is a teacher. That's what I am. Oh. So I've, my, my ego is a, is a the rock star guy is my ego thing. You know, I do that. I did that whole thing, which is great and all that. I mean, I like doing music. I've got a creative streak in me, but I really need to teach. That's what I need to do. Like, I need to do this, what I'm doing now. I need to put, that's who I, what I feel. Like, if I get, if I'm sitting with you on a plane or a train, I'm not going to talk to you about music. I want to talk to you about your life. Right. Because that's my nature. That's my spider web. That's what I love to do. I love to discuss things. I love, I love communication. I love exchange of ideas. I love, you know, I love when people tell me things I don't know. I'm like, dude. Like, somebody told me the other day that, um, and, and this just blew my mind, is that we all have the same grandmother. Like when we go back, like I got my blue, like chasing DNA back. The, so I go back, I go from England up to Scotland, then I go to Ireland, and then I go to Northern Spain, and then I go to Turkey, and then I go to Africa. And we all come from that little old lady in Africa. Wow. She had the balls to cross this river. She crossed this river and went into the, the next continent. She had the balls to just do it. To, she didn't know what was there. She didn't know what it was about. She crossed this river. You, it's your grandmother too. Like, that's where we all come from. It's like, oh, my God. Wow. Look, we actually are related from that old, from that old, that little African girl. Because she wouldn't have been an old lady. She'd been a little African girl who had the balls to go across that, you know. I, so things like that, I'm like, dude. <laughs> You know, I love that. I just think that's, you know, amazing. So that side of my nature has to be taken care of. And that's why I've never been interested in being a rock star. It just doesn't interest me. Mm -hmm. People say, why don't you do this? Or why don't you do that? Because I'm just, I truly, I'm not interested in it. It's just, it's like. But you use your music to teach at these house that's concerts. What that, so sorry, that's what I should have said. So that's what my house concerts are. Okay. My house concerts were a way to take music and teach you know like so i can tell the stories my stories are you know are, are, are cloaked in humor but there's some serious stuff in there about you know i'll say it through humor but people will leave the room going dude what the f you, know, like, <laughs> you know it's a lot of that and i love that so so i feel like i'm being useful which is another thing in my nature i need to feel like i'm being of use otherwise yeah. you know like swanning around like with you know with a pair of leather pants on and a you know, I can't, well, I can't do that now. I'm too fat. I, I, I've got a big pair of tits. I, I can't, I'll be swanning around with a big pair of tits. But I can't, you know, like I can't, uh, I'm just not interested in it. Yeah. But when you give your, so I have to, I have to, so I can't remember what you said to Ed. So Ed's a Sag and I'm a Pisces. And you were talking about what everybody, every uh, different sign in the room what they say after they have sex. Right. And he has said it to me a couple of times and I forget, what, what would a Sag say? Well, I'll go through them. So Aries says, um, let's do that again, right? Taurus says, should we order pizza? <laughs> Gemini says, where's the TV clicker? <laughs> Cancer, Cancerian say, um, should we get married? Leo says, wasn't I great? <laughs> Virgo says, should we wash the sheets? 
Libran says, if it was okay for you, it was okay for me. Scorpio says, should I untie you now or later? <laughs> Sag says, don't call me, I'll call you. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Capricorn says, have you got a business card? <laughs> Aquarian says, Aquarian says um, let's do that again with our clothes off. <laughs> and Piscean says, what was your name again? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> So I trump him every time he says, don't call me, I'll call you. And I'll be like, what's your name anyway? All you got to do, Kimberly, after you've had sex, just turn around and goes, what's your name again? Exactly. <laughs> so that's right? what you bring. You bring so much joy and fun when you have a house concert. It's just, it, it is. No, it, they are. No, they're fun. But they, they're designed to be fun. You know, it's designed yeah. like to go around. To, you know, cause, and I got to go around. I've done about 1,500 of them, 2,000 of them. Hmm. And to go around to all the people's houses around the world who've like supported my music and see their families and play table tennis with them. And the, it's fantastic, yeah. man. Like, I'm, I like that. Like, I mean, I'll do music like that. I love yeah. that. Yeah. I love them all. They're great. You go and see the, you know, you've seen these people online, like say, Trevor Shplahubi. And you've, I've seen it for like, since 1982, Trevor Shplahubi. And then all of a sudden I'm in Trevor Shplahubi's house and he's like, dude. And it's like, his kids are there and they're going, Francis Dunnery. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> That's it's what it's great, like. dude. It's just fantastic. So it's I out get out a great control. kick out of that. I, you know, like where, and the normalcy of it, like instead of showing up like some asshole in a, you know, in a, in a, like that whole, that, you know, it's kind of a bit distasteful, that whole music thing like that, you know, it's just, just a bit silly sometimes, you know, people thinking well, they've got the right to. You don't bring that. You definitely do not bring that. No, nah, I'm not For interested sure. in it. And people talk about your concerts. I mean, you were here about a year ago and people are still talking about different aspects of that concert. So yeah. Yeah. Because I, I think like some of the subject matter, it's not so much me that's to do with me. It's just that the things that we're talking about address people's real life. lives. Yeah. Real yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about your astrology past be or path because I have had a few readings with you and the first time we got together, you had my chart. And you immediately went into, so I'm going to push a few buttons and you immediately went into not, you know, this was your birthday and you know, you're this and you're that and you're the other thing. It was more like, okay, let's talk about your father. You immediately right. got right to the heart of one of my many issues. And um, <laughs> not that my father was a bad person, anybody, but. Um, I can't remember your chart. Did you have Saturn in the fourth house or Pluto in the fourth house? I can't remember. Oh, fourth house, you're asking me to know. I'm a Pisces. Well, that would be I the know. father. Be I, I don't have your, I don't have your Sorry. <laughs> But my point is, when someone wants to work with you on the astrological level, I know you have a couple different offerings, and um, they're very insightful. So could you tell us a little about, about that? Well, astrology is a really interesting thing because, you know, I'm, I'm not really a... I think, you know, like, like in, people think what astrology is, is like them things in magazines and horoscope magazines that's you know that's a bit of fun i mean i do that on my patreon but it's, it's fun i mean it's, it's slightly relevant but it's not like a you know that's not really how it works yeah but it's kind of like if you understand that a fact is not the truth mm. you, know, you have to this, in order to understand what astrology is you've got to understand that a fact is not the truth a fact is is objective reality it's a fact like we're, we're talking Right. So that's a fact. Like we're having a conversation. That's a fact. But the type of conversation is the truth. And our truth is personal because you create your own reality. So yeah. when you get into the, the others, you know, and so cause and effect would be a fact. Which, and that's great. That's science. That's all science. And that's 50% of reality. They say it's 100%, but it isn't. 50% of reality is subjective. You can't. So it doesn't matter what you think about when people say, I believe in Jesus or I believe that's their truth. And whether you like it or not, those two things together make up reality for humans. Right. You can't just have one of them. You can't just have the facts because the truth is Jesus saved them and that's their reality. So that's what makes, and you think you're, you know, because a scientist comes along and goes, yeah, well, there's only science. That isn't. We're caught in this little dance with how the world occurs for us and how the world shows up for us. And we have, we have full say in that. 
You know, like, like it's, a, it's a rainy, look at this. Oh my God, the stupid rain. Oh my God, the rain is pouring down. It's beautiful. Right. Like the, that, that's, that is what makes reality. Whether, whether it doesn't have to be a fact. We don't, reality isn't a fact. It's half a fact. And it's half subjective. Like that's what, and that's what the world is for us. That's how the world occurs for humans. So when you talk about astrology, you're, you're blending those two. You're, you're looking at the, at the subjective reality of the truth of the person's truth. And, and you're seeing how it manifests into a fact. Hmm. Right. So if somebody says, so let's say, for instance, if you've got Saturn in the fourth house, I can see that your truth is you have a fear of abandonment. I'm not saying you have. I'm just saying if, that, if, that, if you have Saturn in the fourth house, it would mean a fear of abandonment and it would probably manifest as trying to, you know, marrying somebody early, looking for an older person. To, you know, that, like there's many different ways it can manifest. Right. But right. the subjective one where the truth is that you have um, a fear of abandonment. Okay, so which one's the fact? The fact that your Saturn is in your fourth house and... Well, that the issue I'm, is abandonment. We don't know because I don't believe in astrology like that. I, okay. I, I study it. I don't. So I'm how do you help people then when things. someone has a reading with you? Cause I've gotten help. So I'm, I'm asking, how do you take the astrological charts and look, read it and whatever magic you do behind the scenes and help a person get over. Because I, get I can confirm their nature. Like one of the things oh, that I do in my thing, okay. I'm, I confirm their nature and they'll, they won't need to, believe anything I, they'll know exactly what i'm saying like it isn't like i like it's i'm you know I'm, I'm i've gotten good at it over 30 odd years you know it's like it's like it's like if you give somebody an old pottery guy a bit of clay he can make a you know he can shape it out pretty quick or if you give you know you give a chef some eggs they can crack them without break you know it's like i'm like that with astrology it's like i've learned I've, i'm well studied you know i'm well studied in it um and so i'm not going to tell anybody you know any nonsense no, there's no like beliefs about this or that. It's just I can I can literally see what how the world's occurring for them, and I can see the type of inner events that they are um, that that their life is going to be like. Like the the chart is like a, a stage set. Ah, okay. Right. So the so you look at the chart. That's like imagine you go to the theater and there's the stage, the chart, and the actors come out. They're the planets. Yeah. Right. So the actors come out and they set up around the around the stage set. And you can see the different areas of life where the drama is going to take place. Got it. So say yours is probably sat in the fourth house with the father. So, oh, there's going to be a, this big story here. The main plot of this story is this father figure down at the bottom. And then, and the sign that the planet is in is the script. So if you've got Saturn in Cancer in the fourth house, it will be about abandonment. If you've got like Saturn in Sagittarius, it will be a religious father who makes you do things because he's religious. If you've got Saturn in Leo, it means you won't be able to, you had a father who couldn't, um, um, uh, uh, didn't, didn't appreciate himself and didn't appreciate you, or you don't feel good enough in your father's eyes, or, you know, like it, it goes like that. But the chart shows you where the drama takes place. And also I can see by looking at where the stars are in the sky now, I can see what's going to happen to you, what's coming up, like what themes are going to come up, you know, and, and, and even in the fact that, you know, I can, like in the, like the, the, the sky today, we've got three planets in Capricorn. That's the ones that's covered, causing havoc with, with, uh, with society. It's the end of society as we know it. We've got Saturn in Capricorn, which is the falling, the, it's like that's the jail cell we're in. Saturn likes the, the proper thing, the right way to do it. So Saturn is basically like the jailer. We have to stay indoors because da da da. Pluto is undermining society in general, and it happened this exact same thing in 1776 and 1778. And if you know your American history, you'll know what revolution. that was. That was the Revolutionary War. Yeah. And so this is the same thing now. This is why I've been saying there's going to be a revolution for the last 10 years. This is the moment, 2023, it hits in. So you're going to see the revolution. It's the same thing that happened between 1778 and 1798. It's the exact same thing. They'll probably re-sign the Declaration of Independence because that was created around about that time. Mm -hmm. So all these things. But Jupiter is also in, in Capricorn right now, which gives us a bit of hope. You know, there's like, there's like um, things are going to turn. You know, there's like, it's a, a very complex system that's going on. But I, when I look at your chart, I can see how that will affect you personally. Do you know what I mean? There's like the feeling in the air today. Yeah. Anybody born today will be born into this feeling. They'll take the characteristics of that feeling. Oh, God forbid. 
but they will. They'll all take it on. And just like a, a wine, when you go see a wine, in, it takes on the characteristics of the earth that it was born in and the year that it was. Right. Then that's how astrology is to us. We take on the characteristics of the time and the place that we were born, just like a fine wine. So you have a written reading and then you have sessions, correct? Well, I do like Skype sessions like this. So I do, the, you, can just, you can just dial up for them or just send me an email. And then, uh, but I have these written reports uh, that, um, that if you send it, I can give you a, a written report of your basic character. You know what I mean? Like, so when you read it, you'll, you know, you'll read, it'll confirm for you what your nature is. I, I, I won't tell you anything you don't know. I'll tell you things when, I, when you read them, you'll go like, that, that's so true. Dude. So, you know, it's kind of one of them type of things. Okay. It'll fight. You'll finally go, you're right. You're right. You know, it's, it's, it's confirmation of what you, what you knew all along. And, and wanna... then you can start embracing your own nature. Yeah. Then, yeah. That the that's what satisfaction is. When you start to embrace okay. your satisfaction, it's really, really great. You know, well, what it's if like you're the Rolling Stones and you can't get no satisfaction? I can't get no satisfaction. Well, you won't with your ego. It's a fleeting thing. Your ego will never be satisfied because the ego, what it wants is more. Right. That's all it wants, more. Well, it thinks it wants expansion. It wants right? to make itself big, yes. It, yeah. See, we, we, it believes that what we're really after is more time. That's what we want on the earth. All of us mm. just want more time. So behind the ego's... Your nature accepts that you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Your ego tries to keep itself alive with power. It thinks like, if I have a big car, I'll, I'll, be, I'll live for longer. That's, what it, I, that's the, the thing in it. If, I, if I'm the president of a country, I'll live longer. It's all, it's all about more time. Wow. The more power you've got, the more time. I'll get more time. If, I'm, if I live on the main line, I'll have more time than them locked down in, you know, down in the, the shitty part of town. <laughs> but it's not true. You won't have more time. But that's what the ego thinks. It thinks I'll get more time. If I have a big motorbike, I'll get more time. If I'm the president of the company, I'll have more time. If I work out three times a day, I'll have more time. No, you won't. Yeah. No. All these things we believe, you know, and then it's, uh, you know, it's, you realize that like, you know, in, in, in many respects, that <clears throat> there's a lot of fate in the world that people, you know, science doesn't like that thing, but our bodies are full of fate. We know we're going to decompose, right? We've, that's fate. That's it. People say there's no such thing as fate. We have choice. In the, I don't know anymore. You know, like how come I was speaking to Robert about this and um, how come you can have a big hit in, if it's you that does it, right? If it's your stuff, how come, like let's say for instance, I have a big hit, hit record. Mm -hmm. Well, how come I can't do it the year after? Yeah, good point. Because if You're it was me, you. I would be able to do it. Oh, I can have a hit. I can, it's me that makes the hits. It's me. So when I've had a hit, did I just show up for the event or did I make it happen? Because I've done exactly the same thing with other songs and they weren't hits. Right. And they were better songs. <laughs> yeah, okay. So what well, I guess it? it was subjective. It was a subjective what was going on at the day that people thought they liked and didn't like, right? Maybe? There's, I don't know. I mean, these, are, these are the questions. This is why I study astrology because that, yeah. you know, you look at someone like Charles Manson, you think, well, there's lots of people born on the same day as him, but then his childhood was different. So, you know, you look at these different factors that come into the play and you think like, wow, this just makes up reality, this whole thing. Yeah. You know, like I do know that when you're stuck for an answer, astrology is always a good lead. That's cool. You know, it's always a good lead. You can always like, oh, right, right. It'll send you down on the right track. You know, it's, it's good for that stuff. Yeah. So, Tell us about your podcast because I know I get sucked in and I just love hearing your voice and um, what you have to impart. On pa well, I go on Patreon. I yeah. do a thing on Patreon now because I found out it's a way that, um, you know, people can support artists they like, which is great. And because, you know, the way, you know, I, as an artist, you just never have a guaranteed paycheck. You never do. And if you're not like a mega super popular artist, which I'm not because I don't really promote myself, I don't get into it. Mm -hmm. then, you know, you've got to rely on people uh, to support you in certain ways, like house concerts, you know, things like that. You've got to get real creative and make new avenues of, um, of, of people be able to support you in your music. Patreon was an online thing where people can go on and support artists who they like so they can keep doing their work. And, uh, you know, I get really good support from Patreon. And um, <clears throat> if they want to go there, you can, there's loads of different tiers you can go on the there's like a $5 tier, a $10 tier where you get all the podcasts. There's like the $20 tier where you get the concerts. I do a concert once a month. There's a $50 tier where you get 
behind the scenes on all my stuff and blah, you know, there's $150 tier where you get a reading every, every month. It's kind of like a, you know, you get a re you get everything be beneath that, the concerts, wow. the blah, blah, blah. That's probably the best value and pl plus a reading every month. Um, you know, it's pretty good value for money, really. It's good. And, and what do you talk about uh, um, during the podcast? Oh, I'll talk about anything. I go into anything like um, anything at all, like current events. I talk about guitar players. I talk about my early bands who I loved, like Genesis and Yes. And I'll talk about, you know, guitar strings. I'll talk, you know, one of the things I got into recently was the, um, you know, some of the more political stuff which was going on. And I, what I was saying was, I was saying that, you know, I don't have a heart to dislike people, given the fact that they're all my brothers and sisters. I just don't know. I, I, if it was up to me, I'd just give everybody everything they wanted. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because I, 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 don't, I don't even care if the Wall Street people rip 50 million off a day. I just don't care. I just give them it. Just let them. I, I don't care. I don't need 50. I don't care. Or if they give people welfare or medical insurance. Or, I just don't care, dude. I honestly don't. And so, so when we were doing the, the, the Black Lives Matter thing, um, you know, I don't want anybody to be harmed or anything. I'm just not one of them type of things. But the problem I've got with this situation, this is what I was talking about recently, is that I don't like what's happening about it because they're starting to tell me and my children they have to bow their head in shame right. for being who we are. And it's like right. I haven't done anything to anybody. Right. And that's a human thing with identity because nature wouldn't do that. No. You see what I mean? So when you get, and this is what happened through, through, um, this is, this is how it works. They start to demonize, you know, they, they said Mexicans, Mexicans were evil and they were full of rapists. And I absolutely reject it outright. They said Muslims were all terrorists and I completely reject it. They said black people were all criminal criminals. I completely reject it outright. Jews are this, these are this, Catholics are this. I reject it. I, it's absolute bollocks from top to bottom. But I also reject the fact that, that my children, who don't even know what racism is or anything, that there's some like horrible little bastards who's got to hang their head in shame. I reject it. I reject it. And that's why I don't like that, that thing. It's not because I don't want people to be free and all that. I mean, you know, I, I mean, I believe, I believe there's a lot of freedom in this country now anyway. Well, but, do you believe that this whole Black Lives Matter thing and, and everything else is going on is part of the planetary? Was it it's absolutely aided is, to yes. happen? It, it, it's a jail cell because, it, yes, no, it is. You can see it. It's like, I mean, we're walking on a lake of crazy right now. We are. All crazy. You've got, to be, you've got to be aware. Any ideology. See, when you talk to somebody from an ideology, it's boring because it's not their words. They're predictable. I know what they're going to say. Yeah. Even in like the women's movement or the, I want to hear somebody's death. I want to hear their thoughts. Right. I don't want to hear some ideology about somebody saying like, well, you know, I know what they're going to say. It's like, you need to tell them. I know exactly what you're going to say. Yeah. You know that, and that doesn't help. The thing that helps human beings is self-reliance. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. If you can, it's it, I, imagine, right. If I, if I was to say to you, Kimberly, What's the best thing for a bear or a deer? Is it to be let roam free in the forest, in the woods and the lakes and the mountains to be free to, to take part in nature and do that and, 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 or to be held captive in a zoo by some well-meaning zoologists and fed every day? Free, clearly. You see what I mean? Because so that's how it is with people is that the more you take away their powers and their ability to take care of themselves, by, you know, but it's like feeding the, like, like, that's why they say don't feed the bears. There's a reason for it right. because they become dependent on you and these poor bears can't cope without you then. Yeah. This is how people get, you know, it's like I come from a working class background. I was a little shit. I was, I was violent, f fighting, drinking animal. And I, <laughs> and I, so you can't tell me, and we didn't have a pot to piss in either. We had nothing. But I figured it out. Yeah. And if somebody like me can do it, anybody can. Mm. You know, and, and, and we all have the same ability to uh, progress our lives. If the Queen or Prince Charles is born here in the world, they've got what they've got and all that, and I'm born here, and I've got what I've got, we have the same equal right uh, um, opportunities to progress our lives. Just because he's brought up in a palace with a, a, a BMW, it doesn't make, so what? Well, they didn't actually progress, did they? 
that dynasty is the same as it's been for forever. They haven't progressed. But he has an opportunity to progress, you know, like to, to progress himself. It doesn't matter what you could be on, a, on the street. You can progress your life just the same as Prince Charles can. Hmm. You have the same opportunity to do it. So, but you, but, and, and, and obviously, you know, like my mom and dad, the poor things, like they never own, they never had a credit card. They never had a car. They never had a, a telephone. They never, none of this stuff. They paid for what they had. Right. And, you know, and, and it, it, they didn't know how to do like stocks and all that. So you can't just say to people, well, get stocks and bonds. You know, you can't, there has to be a slow transition over maybe 30, 30 years where you teach young, you know, like what happens is now these young kids are being born as you, uh, and that the world's telling them the world hates you. They can't stand you. You're black and nobody likes you. And it's like, don't tell the kids that. Right. You lunatic. Yeah. You know, it's like, stop, don't tell your kids. That's disgusting. Those poor little kids. And they're soaking up that shit. It's like, you're telling them that nobody likes them. It's absolutely disgusting. I just think it's like child abuse to me that. Yeah. Because they were told me that with that working class thing. That's why I'm passionate about it. Right. Tell you know us about I mean? your organization to help children and how does it help children, please? Well, I have a charity. When my mom and dad died, they were such giving people. They were, they were like ultra Catholic. You know, that in Catholicism, they teach you to give all your shit away. Yeah. They do. The church, but that's another thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Only give it away to one entity, the corporation. Right. <laughs> but, and so we did. So my mom and dad were very giving, you know, and we had this house like a, Everybody went to our house. My brother was like a rock star guy. Everybody loved my brother. He was like the most popular guy in the town. And so there's all those people at our house. There was a coffee and tea and the food. And it was just, the house was just like the center point for about, you know, 50 people. And when they died, it was a real shame that that giving stopped because my mom and dad used to feed all the kids on the block. You know, there was all those people at our house. And so I set up the charity to keep giving like that so they could, in their name. And that's what we do. We get together every year and do a concert. I've got one this month online. And um, wow. I think it's the 22nd. I, I don't know. I, whatever Saturday is. Saturday and is, it, is this all on your website? How do we find out? How do uh... um, I haven't got around to that yet, but I will. Okay. Um, I'll put it up there on uh, tomorrow on October the 1st. But you can buy tickets, like 25 bucks. And there's like, uh, we've got Steve Hackett from Genesis. We've got Squeeze. We've got, you know, there's a whole bunch of people on there. And uh, they're going to do songs and all that and talk online. And because uh, we can't do it with the COVID thing. But it's a really warm, fuzzy event. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me, and um, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just done in a good spirit. It's not like you know, it's just people just nobody gets paid in the charity. There's no like you know. Well, who no, benefits? How do how do your recipients benefit? Well, we actually buy like things like hospital beds for pe for for children's cancer wards, so like mothers can sleep next to their children while they're having chemotherapy. Wow. You know, stuff like that. You know, and. Uh, or you've got like, um, you know, any like we buy like computers for blind kids, or you know, any any way you can help like that. If you have a look on the website, it's uh, ckdcf.org. Charlie and Kathleen Dunry Children's Fund, ckdcf.org, and you'll see what we've done on there. There's all sorts of things, you know. We've had, uh, you know, it's good. It's just good stuff. You, you got to give amazing stuff. That's what do you the, mean? The, you good. Know, it's the life giving. Giving. Yeah. Yeah. You well, we're going to have, we're going to have all of your information, you know, put in one nice, neat little spot so that everybody can know what that information is. So I think if I you didn't write it down, don't worry. They, they won't want to go anywhere. Anywhere near me. <laughs> 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 They'll be like, yeah, let's put that information there. Then we know to, to avoid it like the plague. <laughs> Well, let me see that fat bastard again. <laughs> well, then they don't understand. They're missing out. Good for them. Oh, man. <laughs> Dear me. All right, great. Wow. Honestly, your wealth of knowledge is just, um, it's stunning. I don't know how else to word it. It's, it's just narcissism. <laughs> That's all it is. It's just nar narcissism. <laughs> I've spent that long thinking about myself. <laughs> I've turned into an encyclopedia of narcissism. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> you just got to give. That's what I would say. If anybody wants some advice, give, 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 give. That's the way to, that's how you get satisfied in life. Once you get into that frequency, yeah, 
there's not a bullet will hit you or a bird will attack you anywhere. Once you start getting into that, you're mm -hmm. safe as houses. You enter, you enter that frequency where nothing bad. When you're all you're in the city and you're all like, oh, you're doing this whole thing. But when you start to give, it just goes, and you just enter that. You just start bouncing like that. And the whole <laughs> world becomes, you know what I mean? A great big, a great big bouncy toy. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Really nice. All right, good. Promise me we'll do this again. I'll do it again anytime. I've told you. Anytime you want. Yeah. Haven't you got a bottle of vodka to finish? I, I have water. <laughs> it's clear. You can't be a proper Pisces if you're not nailing vodka every night. If you, <laughs> you got to at least, at, least a, at least a bottle of wine. Otherwise, you're not a proper Pisces. No, honestly, it's, it's vodka and champagne. They're magical. They're just vodka, magical. Yeah, they, they are. Because <laughs> they change your truth. <laughs> No, I think alcohol, I think, I think when people drink alcohol, their inhibitions come down and they behave more like themselves than they do when they're sober. Well, the, the diff, so, but there's a difference, right? Because I used to drink like a fish, but I don't now. But it well, depends on, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you're right. But what happens is, is that your consciousness goes beneath thought. That's your relaxed beneath thought. Right. When you do it the other way, without alcohol, you're relaxed above thought. Right. You see what I mean? So one goes beneath thought. Yeah. So it's kind of like it's a it's a it's a slightly it can you got to be careful and keep your finger on it because it can go dark once you right. start drop you know it can get into like oh <laughs> you can do that whole thing but when you're relaxed above thought yeah you're actually transcending thought you're going in, you're you're coming into being that's so a different that's thing you, you might people. find yourself just in the daytime you'll find yourself in moments of that, like meditation, where you're just wandering around in your house by yourself and you'll be, you'll be above thought. You won't be worried. You won't be scared. There's no fear. Just for brief moments. And you'll be like, yeah, you know. I had one of them today when I was driving and the leaves blew. The sun was shining and the leaves blew like a whirlwind thing. Uh, these beautiful colored leaves, like red and yellow and all that. And I was like, and I, I, I actually said out loud in the car, oh my God, look at that. It was yeah. amazing, dude. It was like, but I was above thought. I was like, yeah. And then I realized that, you know, I was about 600 pounds overweight and I started going back fearful again. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> My ass is on the floor. <laughs> well, what you help people do is you help people realize that there is a way to get above thought and there is a way to have moments to be above thought so we can get yeah. out of the muck and the mire of our own ego. I think so, yeah, and to give, like, just to give, and like, you know, like, stop, you know, sometimes it, it's hard, you know, on Facebook is like McDonald's food for the mind, you know, you get on that stuff, and, and it's, you know, it's kind of like, um, yeah. you know, you just get sucked into it, and all of a sudden you're arguing with people, and it's like, it's horrible energy that. Yeah, yeah. It's not nice yeah. at all, you know, so it's like, you get into that whole thing, it's like, just, it's like eating McDonald's every single day, it's like, just doesn't, you know, it keeps you, just. Low vibe. Keeps you frightened. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's another story. Well, everybody, because we're, okay, well, we'll save that story for next time. And everybody's going to have your information to go just check you out, you know, oh, I agree. And, and see how they can further get, get them some more Francis Dunnery time because Francis Dunnery time is a good time, no matter which it's, way you look at it. Yeah. It's a fat time. It's a, what did we say I was at the beginning? What was it? A fat multimedia psychopath. Yes. <laughs> Get yourself a fat multimedia psychopath now. Exactly. Right. Hey, what do you think of my new backdrop? Do you like it? I love if it. I move up the way it'll focus. Watch. See that? Watch. You need to get a camera like this. I do. I, I need to set me up like you're set up. I'll that's set you up to an A5100 Sony. They're great. And a cam link. That's all you need. Okay. And a, and a half decent mic. I'll set it up for you. All right. All right. I'm going to come visit and, you know, we'll... we'll We'll You've got enough money, Kimberly. Come on, go and drop two or three grand on us. A decent set. I'm, I'm a money Pisces. I'm not a what you, what's the other? There's a money Pisces, and then there's a oh, there's the the martyr Pisces who just cries uh, yeah. all the time, just gets you know, just is like desperate and sad and the world, and you know, the, that whole thing. You don't want to do that. No, well, I mean, I go there sometimes, but no, I'm, I'm more the money Pisces. All right. <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're have gonna a beautiful day, again. Kimberly. Thank you very much. I'm going to have to go now. I'm going to make some, I'm, gonna, I'm starving. I'm going to make some, uh, some chips. Some McDonald's? And, um, no. And beans. Oh, chips and beans. Sounds good. English. Sounds good. I'll be right there. So I'll leave. I, I, what do we do here? Do we stop it? Do you stop it? What happens? Yeah, well, I'm going to say one more thing. I'm going to okay. say, and 
To everyone watching, thank you for joining us for this episode of the Happiness Retreat. I hope you have gotten some inspiration, some motivation, some guidance, and some clarity in your connection with your own soul and becoming the, past, the master of your own energy. Until next time. Good job, Kimberly. Take care.